Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, what's happening, man? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you know when you're in those phases, Doug, where it, <laughs> the biggest challenge you've got is to control the speed at which you're running because you've just got so much inspiration that's flowing through you? <laughs> That, that's kind of where I'm at. Obviously, you and I were talking until my time, 12.30 last, uh, t- 10 p.m. UK time last night. I was then just buzzing, so I didn't get to go to bed till like 12.31. And I've been, uh, as you know, I've been wanting to shift my sleep around, right? So this week, a big focus has been just getting up naturally without an alarm. And I've been just bouncing out of bed at 6 a.m. Uh, I don't know how many hours of sleep I've been getting. I, I don't care. I've I've got obviously got an aura ring to track sleep. I'm, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to. I'm just going to go by how I'm feeling. I'm feeling great. Um, you know, I think in the past when I've when I've forced myself out of bed, I've then had to rely on caffeine during the day. I'm only having one cup of coffee, and that's at like eleven. I have a caffeine window of eleven and two. I have one cup of coffee. It's not very strong. I'm just powering through the days. So last night, obviously, I went to bed a little bit at 12.30. I've been trying to get to bed between around 10.30. Woke up this morning later than usual. Immediately felt like, oh, shit, I'm behind, I'm behind. Um, But stuck to my guns, did my morning routine, did my morning learning. Went through the breath work. Afterwards, just felt incredible. Like it just completely recalibrated my system and my energy. And then, yeah, uh, today just been... Totally inspired, cranking things out, and I'm doing a 22-hour fast, so I'll break my fast. It's 4.15 now. I'll have something to eat when we finish, so probably about 7 p.m. So, yeah, I'm doing well. well. (laughs) That's awesome, man. Uh, I'm going to have you mail your aura ring to me just to get the temptation (laughs) out for you, and I'll give it back to you next time I see you. Um, Well, the difference there is being pushed versus being pulled into your passion, right, into your life. And I think what you're saying is, you know, I can relate to it so much, especially previously as a younger business person, I started business in my early twenties, you know, as owning my own business, that is. And I remember the struggle, right? Pushing, 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 you know, you know, having that identity of someone who could hustle, push harder than the other guys, outwork them, right? It was like an athlete. I'll out train you. I'll out, you know, (laughs) that mentality or that vision you have of yourself Versus being pulled by inspiration, you know, because back then I would be sucking down energy drinks, you mm. know, Fedra was legal back then. It was commonplace and workout drinks and I'd be drinking it for working out, but I'd also be drinking those drinks to pound out extra work. Um, and, you know, we, the vernacular we use, the, the words we use are very telling in those situations. You know, when we talk about uh, it's a struggle or I'm sacrificing or I'm pushing through this. Um, you know, I'm going to fight my way to the end. I'm going to pull myself up. These are all mm. struggle words, right? These are all words that, that are indicators that you're not working with passion, right? You know, you get up, you have three, four cups of coffee just to get going. Where you, conversely, right? And this goes in all areas of your life, guys. But you, Tim, are being pulled. Like you're, you're springing out of bed ready to roll. You're ready to go. You're staying up at night because you're buzzing on a natural high. Mm. You know, and it, mm. I think this is one of those things that as men, we can apply to every area of our life. This, this brushes over into the fuck yes, fuck no lifestyle. Uh, you know, we talk about one destination, two paths. You know, when we teach the guys and you know, people listening to this might not know what we're talking about, but you know, the one destination, two paths, the second path, the path that's not chosen as often because it just doesn't look right is the path of ease. The path and the path of ease doesn't mean you don't work, right? It's just the opposite. Yeah. You actually work a lot, but it's a different type of work. Mm-hmm. It's consistently being in flow because, you know, you're managing your by energy rather than by time and, and stress and struggle. And what if it was what if the your life was in such a a way that it was working for you, not against you. And mm-hmm. I think that's a huge paradigm shift for most of the men. And a lot of the guys that we talk to are struggling in the area of the relationship, right? 
and so during that struggle, I can see them saying, well, hey, this is different. You don't know what's going on in my house, man. <laughs> you don't get it. Um, and that's true. We don't. But we've been through something similar. And it's a very vastly different scenario when your relationship is well, the relationship with your wife, the person you chose, you know, you committed in front of all your best friends and family to spend the rest of your life together. When that is a struggle and you're fighting for it versus being in flow and being pulled from it. And that also starts with the inside out living. Mm -hmm. So I can go on about this for a couple more hours, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think it really relates to what you're just saying. And what a lot of the guys, you know, that listen to the show are currently going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting me balancing this level of inspiration and honoring my flow with this as well. Right. Because <laughs> I, I could literally get so swept up in this because it's so enjoyable. Um, and it's not coming from a place of force. My energy is through the roof. Uh, my creativity um focus is is good as well it's been um i feel like my focus has been a little bit uh not as sharp as it has been previously but as i reflect i think it's just find solutions and try things you know it's like i'm just trying i feel like i'm trying things at, at such a, a fast pace to find answers and sifting through things and conversations and information and you know and, and just laying bricks and laying bricks and, and laying bricks and i've had cycles and seasons like this before uh, but it was different before because you know before i then i'd rely on caffeine a lot as well i wouldn't i wouldn't be aware of what was going on too because there's a real fine line for me at least between the path of force and the path of power you know and it being one whereby it, it, it is inspired because as soon as, as soon as you allow yourself to become out of balance and let's say you know, if last night, for example, was a common occurrence where I was going to bed at 12.30, 1 a.m., not really sleeping that well, uh, you know, missing my natural cycle of when I like to wake up, because that's the great thing I found this week. I've, woke, I've been waking up with no alarm, so I've not been setting an alarm, and naturally I've been waking up at 6 a.m. and feeling great. I don't know how many hours sleep I've been getting. I've just not bothered tracking that um, because I just don't want to – I don't want to add stress, right? And constraints to, oh, I feel great, but I'm only getting six hours and, you know, my health, I should be getting seven or eight because that's when, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the, all the evidence and stuff around that. Point being is if I feel good and I feel great and I'm, I'm not drinking alcohol in an evening, I'm not eating any junk food, my, my health's on point actually. Um, and again, this is another distinction for me because, if I was to go to bed late because I'm excited by the work I'm doing, not sleep as well, wake up, feel like I'm behind, it's then easy to make excuses and skip a workout. It's easy to then make excuses and skip those tiny bits of connection time that I have with Amelia in the morning that, that, that has really seen our relationship blossom over the past, or well, this year really. It was good was really enjoyable and it's gone to a, a completely new level and it's all from how uh how i show up in it which obviously we speak a, a lot about right but there's a difference between doing and being you know you can do the actions and you can validate amelia and i can you know, do all the right things but if if my if how i'm doing it isn't coming from a, a playful connected present place it just doesn't land first she's you know women are intuitive right they get it you know they, they get it as guys we think that we can just tick the box sometimes and it really it doesn't land right and you it's like what well, i'm you don't get it I'm, I'm doing all the right things so point being is you know the fine line here is that if you know waking up feeling behind it can be very it used to be for me anyway very easy to then slam the coffee down, which then would release adrenaline in my body, which would exasperate the feelings of feeling behind, which then means that the inspiration changes almost to desperation, right? And then I start, I then become busy versus being productive. And instead of looking after my health and looking after my relationship with Amelia and the whole inside out living, it can, it can quite easily um become outside in and then i start to work later a few nights in a row and then before i know it you know my exercise becomes something i've got to do and there's stress there and i'm 
pushing my body and punishing myself, which adds more stress to the emotional stress I'm having in work. And, you know, so, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying finding my groove with this and just, just playing with this. And, um, you know, you know, I've had many conversations this week, right. About, you know, what, what this, this, this new phase and flow could look like, right. Cause as we constantly, pushing ourselves right and and re- challenging ourselves to become better and and grow um whilst also making sure we're we are in alignment with this conversation with what we teach the men um and quite frankly doug with the way that the guys provide in the brotherhood uh, performing the brotherhood <laughs> you know using the tools and the coaching that we give them you know if i if i was to then be experiencing this level of inspiration and you know no one's perfect right so you know sometimes you can easily just veer onto the path of force a little bit but it's where you hang out right it's where you hang out but you know point being is with the guys in the brotherhood that do such a great job it, it, i love that because it also holds me even more accountable to continuing to sharp continue to sharpen my saw on the path of power because with every phase of growth comes a new challenge and then a new norm and then you know it's grow stabilize grow stabilize so yeah i'm really enjoying just playing with this and uh finding a rhythm in it and obviously like you said the other day amelia is going to test me um you know because as we put the foot on the gas again and allow the inspiration to flow through you know the women naturally want to then hang on a minute, something's going on over there. Something's changed over there. Huh. Hmm. Is he still here? Is he still present? Is he still going to take care of me? Hmm. So there's been many times where she's come up and she's been like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling needy. I just want to chat. I'm like, cool. You can lay down there if you want. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep working. (laughs) Um, And yes, I definitely have, have had those tests coming from her. So um been aware of them and, and just navigating through is is interesting and fun and yeah, we'll just see how it how it continues to unfold. Yeah, I mean your partner will test your resolve, right? They want to see how serious you are about what you're saying you're going to do. So if it's I'm gonna wake up naturally yeah. around six, I'm gonna get out of bed, they're gonna try to pull you back in bed, right? They're gonna try to have <laughs> sex with you, whatever it takes to get you. Because they're trying to test how serious your resolve is as a man. Not just about that issue, but how serious your resolve is as a man. And when you can show her that you are more important than her and your your passions are more important, you become more of an object of affection and desire, right? Because if she's your number one, then you can't take care of yourself or her later on when the when the crap hits the fan. So it's really interesting. I'm gonna I think it's awesome that you're observing this and watching her, you know, subconsciously probably play this out and see, oh, okay, am I stronger than Tim? Can I, you know, this passion he has for growing this movement of men and helping these guys, you know, is, you know, am I stronger than that? And can I almost, it's almost like a competitive sport, right? They're trying to beat you <laughs> is what it seems like. And they would never admit it because they're not, they're not consciously trying to do it. Now, some women know that, it's a subconscious thing and in retrospect can pull it out, but yeah, it's, sorry, go on. something that was interesting. I'm going to tie in this into what you were saying about how you just continue to up level and you keep doing it over and over again to see how it would work. This morning as part of my daily reading. I was reading uh, something out of the Stoics, right? The Stoic philosophy. And it was actually Ryan holiday's book and he has a co-author on it, the daily Stoic. And it was a random page kind of flipped to it. And what it talked about was habit right? And with every, what I got out of it, and this is, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but every decision we make or non-decision we make leads to another habit, right? Habit is simply repetition. Repetition of doing something becomes a habit. Now, if five o'clock comes around and you have a cocktail, right? Every, fr- every time at five o'clock, that's going to be your habit, right? If you choose not to, cho- not drinking is your habit, right? But this also goes which I thought was even more important to me, and this is my extrapolation, it goes to the thoughts that are in your head, right? If you're habitually thinking that your wife's a bitch, right? Or you're habitually thinking all the time that you're fat, 
or whatever, that becomes your identity, right? The habit of your identity. Every time we think something, that becomes a habit. So if you're constantly stressed, you become addicted to stress and it becomes habitual. Constantly, uh, you know, doing something, let's just say eating the wrong foods, right? That becomes your new norm. And you wake up one day and you're like, geez, how'd I get 50 pounds overweight? Uh, but not only that, Tim, which is interesting as I continue to extrapolate this, is your gut biome te- changes, right? As you know, I had my gut biome all uh, mapped out recently. And so you you change at a physiological level. So it's not just gaining weight, but now your your gut starts asking for those foods more often, alcohol, sugar, or, or healthy foods, right? Give me mm. some more of that good stuff. And so every choice we make becomes a habit, and that includes self-talk. It includes what you're doing is getting up naturally at 6 a.m. because effectively you're changing your identity of who you believe yourself to be. And that mm-hmm. new thought pattern you're doing and building on becomes a, becomes a habit of becoming an even more powerful man. Mm. Yeah, I want to make, and I love what you're saying there. Um, and I just want to kind of highlight something because I don't want it, you know, I don't know how this is coming across, but I'm definitely not perfect by any means. Well, <laughs> um, I, can, I can agree with you there. <laughs> um, and, you know, for the past couple of weeks, you know, my diet has been good and my health's been good, but also with it being warm and sunny. Now, a few little treats of, you know, as you know, chalky chocolate has snuck <laughs> into my diet a little bit, uh, which hasn't usually been there. Um, so it's not about, you know, the, the absence of the, you know, chocolate, for example. But the, one of the key things for me, you know, this is like living from the, the inside out, right? And it's taken time to get to, to this kind of level of, of awareness and, and performance, um, and it takes time and it's really important for me, at least the conversations that I'm in, right? The conversations I'm able to have with you and Arthur and, uh, the guys in the brotherhood, it by default puts me in an environment that is geared towards winning and cost correction. And then with the tools that we have, um, you know, it's, it, again, it just adds to, adds to the recipe. It's another ingredient in the recipe. And a, and a big part of that is, you know, the alpha rise and shine routine and the alpha decompression routine. And that, you know, this isn't a plug about those routines, whether you do those routines or not, whatever you do, just make sure that you have a routine in the morning at the end of the day. And also at the end of the week as well, where you're able to have these points in time where you can um, review your performance and look at your wins and your lessons and, and celebrate your wins and appreciate them. So, cause that then starts to build more and more pathways and reinforces your identity and, and what you're doing. And then obviously the lessons uh, enables you to be able to see what patterns are going on. And if there's any patterns that don't serve you, you're then able to change them, right? So um, it's absolutely key. You know, I'm journaling now more than ever. Oh, not that's extreme, but I'm journaling now more than I have done in a long time. Um, I'm carrying my journal with me actually everywhere around the house. It tends to just be by my side thinking about it. Um, and I'm just journaling a lot, a lot as I realize things and as I see things, it's like I'm, I'm just so eager and open as well at the same time. Um, and it's great. And I'm really, it's, yeah, it's really great. And um, for me, this, in my experience, this kind of, this kind of way of operating to this degree, because you, you know we still operate to this, right? But the level of inspiration, it comes in waves in my life. If I look back, it comes in waves. And if I try and control those waves by saying that every night I'm going to finish at five or um, I don't know, whatever conditions I want to put around it, then it can sometimes suppress it right? It can hold me back. It's kind of like cutting off the inspiration. We talk a lot about peace, power, and flow, right? The fundamentals of alpha. You know, if you think about inspiration and you think about creativity and and going with the flow, then it's not something that can fit into a box. So, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, right? In, In the sense of being able to tune in and, but when you have those routines where you can check in, you can, you can do that. You can check in, you know, if, you know, that inspiration has been leading to you finishing at midnight every night for two weeks. That's a bit different. Um, It can start to borderline 
you can check in with yourself, of course, but check in to see whether that's kind of starting to border on less about inspiration and like I'm more, I say, more about desperation. So um, for me, at least, whenever these waves come up, whenever I get into these, these moments, I always honor them. And I do my best, I do my best to one of them and honor them with the speed at which they are coming up as well. Um, the speed at which they want to, they want to flow through. Um, whilst also making sure, like I've said, that you keep those territories, what I keep those territories in the right order, self at the bottom of the pyramid, then health, then relationships, then what? Cause it's all of those territories that actually put me in the best place to then fuel the inspiration, right? Cause I'm the less stressed. I'm the least stressed. I'm the more inspired, the more, the happier I am. Um, the more I'm receiving love and admiration from Amelia. So I feel great there. Um, and in doing so, instead of having the other areas as, as areas of growth, cause you're looking to strive across the board. It's better for me to be like, right, and you said this the other day, have, why don't you just do 90, 91, 90 days, 90 minutes, one focus, um, which is kind of what I'm doing, but I'm just doing way more than 90 minutes <laughs> and I've been just doing whatever, however many minutes, but having one focus and the big area of push right now is, is business whilst also making sure my other areas maintain the level that they are. Right. And then when this wave in business maybe comes to an end, maybe it'll then go back to a bit of a push in health. Right. And then, you know, kind of like uh, everything then starts to rise and pull each other up at different points, but everything pulls together. And as you continue to go through the process and repeat it over time and over years, before you know it, you know, done consistently over a period of 24, 36, 48 months, you've completely shifted the standard of your entire life. Everything's raised together you know people like to think that it can happen very quickly and very easily it, it, it can for some but typically they don't sustain it because their identity and this habits haven't shifted with it you know it takes time it, 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 or it can take time it can be faster obviously for some than others um but yeah it's don't, don't be fooled by the whole thing of oh well you know it should be here now and it should be easier and all the rest of it because it just, you know, it won't last. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many great things in there. And, you know, when you talk about identity and standards, I was talking to one of the guys that's going through the activation method and I was talking to him and and he was kind of exasperated. Like, ah, he's like, man, you know, he's like, I gotta tell you, like, I, I just, I don't know what's going on, Doug. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, geez, the guys in my, in my group, you know, they're all, we're all doing challenges. We decided to do it as a group, but you know, some of these guys are doing 70 pushups and I mean like they're doing 70 consecutive pushups over and over. He's like, ah. he's like, I can barely do 10. I can do 10. I was like, geez. And I was talking to him about it. I was like, okay, are you doing the 70 pushups? He's like, well, yeah, yeah. I'm doing 10 and 10 here, 10 there. I go, and I go, look, that's your new standard, right? This is your new identity. You've surround the difference is, is now you as a man have surrounded yourself with another group of men and together in all their areas. The push ups are just one example because you know, I just happened to be talking about uh, health with him. Is now this becomes your new standard, right? You've raised the bar in your life. And part of that is raising the bar with people you spend time with, right? If you're hanging out with people who are broke, you're going to be broke. It's statistics, right? There's studies that have been done on this. If you hang mm-hmm. out with people who are overweight, guess what? Your chances are you're going to be overweight. Now, the, tra- the opposite is true. If you're hanging out with really fit people, right? Chances are you're going to be really fit because the activities you do, the conversations you have are going to be around that. And it also goes with your relationship, marriage, right? If you're hanging out with couples and they're all going through divorces and they're not working on their marriage, right? That's a big caveat, right? If they're mm-hmm. all working on it, that's different. Um, but if you're working with, if you're hanging out with people who are working on their relationship, that's going to bleed over, right? That's going to improve your relationship. If you're hanging out with dads who are working on being great fathers, odds are you're going to be a great father simply by association, right? And so that goes a lot into what you're doing, Tim, which is such a beautiful thing, right? You're hanging, you're not only are you, because I know what you're studying in business, but you're also actively surrounding yourself and having conversations with me and other people you know, about the subject, 
right? So you're learning more and that accentuates your growth. It's like, it's like when you're trying to change guys, it's almost like a little, a spark, right? It's a spark of, of inspiration that comes and ways to put gasoline on that spark and make it a friggin' bonfire is surround yourself with other people who are either on the same journey or even better, a little ahead of you. And then also compress time, right? Find someone who's been there, done that, and has a system that you can accentuate, whether it be in business, relationships, health. And, you know, that, and that's what you're doing. And that's what this guy that I'm talking about, won't mention his name, but that's what he's doing. And when I talked to him, I said, look, in the past, if you try to get healthy, and he said, oh, yeah. I go, let me guess. You start off and then you fall off. Start off, fall off, start off, fall off, right? You keep starting and stopping. And he's like, yeah, it's been that way for decades. I was like, well, what about now? Right. And because as you know, we've was recording this, we're going through COVID. And so the activation method guys are going much longer than normal because we're trying to support them through this time. And he said, Doug, for the first time in my life, I'm being consistent. I'm being consistent. And again, it has to do with the system, the process, but also who you surround yourself with. That's mm. everything. Yeah, for sure. Because you're going to have pitfalls, right? Um, yeah. And you know, being able to share those with people and realize that you know, you're still on the right track is huge. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. <clears throat> and uh, I think a big, a big piece of it too is being able to have, how do I say this? It's a mixture of things, right? Because you want to have compassion for yourself along the way because a big part of this is, you know, when you really let go and you're able to be pulled, you know, to the point where you're inspired and jumping out of bed, you, you completely let go of the, the result per se. And it becomes so much about the process and so much of a reckless abandon for the next thing to be right because you're just so far gone from caring whether it's right or wrong because you're going to move through it regardless. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's a right thing, great. You're going to keep moving forwards. If it's a wrong thing, <laughs> great. You're going to keep moving forwards. So these these points in time where you may have in the past, <clears throat> you know, rallied the troops to to push the rock up the hill to then get to this point, you know, when you're actually aligned and been pulled versus pushed, it, it comes from a completely different place. And you know, with that, it's it's a real for me at least just imperfect, imperfect path. Um, and, and you have a real level of focus and expectation as well, you know, because as that identity starts to become solidified, like the, the new identity, whatever it is, or whatever level becomes solidified and you see it, there come, becomes such a level of commitment, you know, peace, power, flow, the fundamentals, you know, the second phase is power, which is all about, you know, taking radical responsibility for your results asking yourself empowering questions so you can see, get perspective, right? And they could be questions from other people, from yourself. You find answers, um, make decisions quickly. You're decisive. So you try things, you get feedback faster so you can go and keep moving and keep moving and you commit, you committed, but unattached, right? You committed to the end outcome and unattached about how you get there. It just doesn't matter how you get there. All you know is that you are, going there. Hey guys, there's so much information here that we decided to break this up into two segments. So what you're going to see in the next one, I invite you to continue is move on to part two, where Tim actually drops some more knowledge and what he's seen with men just like you.